Homecoming 1965 will go down as one of the most significant in the history of Iowa State University. It had the usual homecoming events, the displays, a queen, and of course, a football game. But it had something more, something that marked a new direction for a university world famed for its achievements in technical and agricultural education. Ground was broken for the multi-million dollar Iowa State Center. Four buildings that will sit on 30 acres at the corner of Lincoln Way and Beach Avenue, just off the southeast corner of the Iowa State University campus. It should be completed in 1969. Credit for the Iowa State Center will go to many men in the years to come, but in the beginning it was one man, one man who had an idea some 10 years ago. Dr. Hilton, over in these acres now, occupied by cattle and, and animals, horses, uh, there's going to be a lot of brick and mortar go up here. Uh, how long is it going to take for the whole thing? Yeah. Well, of course, it uh, depends on how rapidly we're able to get the rest of the money needed to finish the center. But uh, I would say it will take somewhere between five or six years to have all of the buildings up. We'll start the auditorium this late winter, or fall. Actually, we'd planned to start it this fall, but the architects just simply aren't ready with their plans. We will start um, the auditorium in late winter or early spring, and it'll be about two years from the time we start before that's ready. And then the big Coliseum will take another two and a half years to build. The auditorium, of course, will go right here in this area. The little theater over here on where this uh, pile of dirt now is. The big Coliseum will go down in this area between here and those woods. And the continuing education center up and down this, this row here. First will be the auditorium, then the Coliseum, and then I'm not sure yet which of the other buildings will start next, but probably will both be started about the same time. Dr. Hilton, what do you think this complex is going to mean for the university? Uh, in its role well, within the state? Well, we are, of course, uh, located about the center of the state. People can come into Iowa State, spend a few hours or a few days very easily. And I think it will provide an opportunity for the university to extend its service to all people of Iowa in every imaginable type of discipline that we offer here on the campus. But it will do more than that. It will provide our students with an opportunity to develop their own talents. It will provide an opportunity for the students to see and to observe and to participate in many of the performing arts. It will provide an opportunity for the staff to enjoy some of the finer things of the cultural center, uh, cultural areas of, of the work of the university and their own interests. It will do many things. I think it will give Iowa State the proper dimension that we need. That's the way I felt from the very beginning. When you started in the beginning, how did you start? How do you start a large project <laughs> like this? Uh, it must seem like a massive, almost impossible Well, the first undertaking. thing I did, I conceived the idea. Then I asked the Department of Architecture to sketch out a, a series of buildings. And uh, we sketched out an auditorium, uh, a coliseum, a continuing education center, and a little theater. And then in the discussions that ensued for a few years after that, we. We tried out ideas on a round building that did not work, and we finally came back to the four units uh, that we have now. But to go back, that was those were the plans. Those was they had to have something to look at to, to portray to the people just what I had in mind. And then, of course, uh, the job was to get some of our prominent alumni, whom I knew had a real interest in the university, who were loyal, and who had some funds uh, to help and to sell them on the idea and to convince them that the state um, had tremendous load to carry financially to provide classroom and laboratory buildings and staff and salaries for staff, and that we would have to get this through gifts and grants and bequests. Once we got that, and we got seven or eight or nine to start with, and then I think we moved it up to about 17 and then 28, and now we have about 61 of our prominent alumni throughout the United States. Well, I would imagine you encountered many problems in this whole effort, could you? Oh, yeah, sure, because the problems with these, that's a whale of a lot of money. Why can't the state do it? 
Uh, we pay money for taxes, and we feel that the support should go only to the private institutions and nothing is against supporting private institutions. It was a job to sell the people on the um, full significance and importance of the project. It was a problem to sell the people from whom we have gotten our money, uh, the needs for supporting uh, a public university like Iowa State University but they have supported and they've done very well by us. I imagine you're a very proud man of over this whole thing because uh, you've well, been very instrumental in the building, the planning, the construction. Of course I am very pleased with it, but the thing that I appreciate most of all and the thing that everybody must appreciate that we never could have had the center had it not been for these fine alumni who have so unselfishly and who have spent so much of their time helping with the campaign. And again, I want to pay high tribute to C.Y. Stevens, who gave us the first big gift that got the program, that got the, the, the uh, campaign off the ground. Sam Hamilton, Harold Brenton, Porter Jarvis, I could, Bill Fisher, I could name dozens. Go on for a program. long time. Yes. Well, how about the people who will be using the center, the students, the people of Iowa and everything? What will they be seeing here? What will they be doing here? Well, um, of course, in the auditorium, that's the first building we'll build, we'll build will be used by the students, the staff, uh, people in Iowa, and they'll have an opportunity to see some of the leading plays in the country, so hear some of the uh, best-known uh, artists, performing artists. Um, in the little theater, which is the building we go over here, the smaller of the four buildings, will be primarily for our students in their training, in developing of their talents. It's called, it will be called an experimental theater. Now the big Coliseum, of course, will be used by every imaginable group of people, the students, the staff, the people in Iowa, or things like I mentioned earlier in the discussion of um, commencements, Visha, Christmas Festival of Music, um, and I suppose in time to come they'll be playing basketball games in this big uh, arena. And the continuing education will be used largely by the staff and the general public in, well, in, in, in keeping their education up to date and keeping their knowledge up to date. Well, it's a great thing, Dr. Hilton. Did you ever worry that maybe it might not happen? Oh, there were some times. No, I worried about the slowness in which the funds were coming in, but I never questioned once that what we'd have this center. Ground was broken for the center this morning. Among the speakers was Stanley Redeker, president of the Board of Regents. Mr. Stevens and family, honored guests, it's a great pleasure to be here representing the Board of Regents and therefore the state of Iowa in this fine program. It's a compliment, I guess, to know that you consider us to be capable of being involved in something of uh, more important than an Iowa, Iowa State football game, or <laughs> maybe beer in the Union. <coughs> <coughs> Through the years, the members of your board and the people of this state have watched the three institutions which we govern grow in a great many ways. One of these, of course, as you well know, is a vast growth in number of students in enrollment. Along with this, it has been very apparent that another type of growth has been very necessary. It has become obvious that the university at Iowa City could no longer be a strictly university in the terms of liberal arts, that the college at Cedar Falls could no longer be merely a teacher's college. And here at Iowa State, it is evident that this school can no longer be just a school of scientific and technical uh, bent. <coughs> we have seen that in order to produce the so-called whole man, that something else is evidently needed. Here at Iowa State, I think it has been obvious that there has been a an outstripping of social understanding by scientific knowledge. Fortunately, among your people, you have those that have been very aware of this obvious need. A need for, in fact, a new dimension in education on this campus. 
it is these to these people that we are attempting to honor today and to these people that the Board of Regents in the state of Iowa are extremely grateful. We would like in every way possible to thank those that have given up their time, efforts, and money in a voluntary way to satisfy this need on this campus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Redeker. We're delighted to have, as a new member of the Board of Governors, as he assumed his office of the presidency of the university, and to have him as a member of our Board of Directors and a member of our Executive Committee, Dr. W. Robert Parks. And already he's made great contributions in our deliberations, and we're delighted to have him speak on this occasion today, Dr. Parks. Mr. Hamilton, Mr. Thorson, Mrs. Stevens and family, students, faculty, Board of Governors, alumni, friends of Iowa State, I think this covers most everyone. I'm sure that by this time on the program, most of the important things that can be said about the center and its use to Iowa State have been said. I would like to say just one or two things in for emphasis. I could not agree more than I do with Mr. Thorson, who said that we're fortunate at Iowa State. Those of us who are students, faculty members, uh, residents of the city of Ames are indeed fortunate to have this wonderful facility uh, come to reality. But I've learned from some experience that when we're fortunate, there's usually someone who's responsible for it. It doesn't often just happen. Many people are, of course, responsible for the fact that we're going to have this Iowa State University Cultural Center. I think that we here at the university are extremely grateful and we want to say so here and now. To the Board of Governors of the Foundation, important men and women, busy men and women, who are willing to take their time and give of their great talent to see this center become a reality for our university. I did not have the privilege of knowing well Mr. C.Y. Stevens. Mr. Hilton, who did know him well, will speak to this point later, but I have been much interested in such a man. I still don't know whether he was born with this characteristic, whether he acquired it in Georgia before he came to Iowa State, whether we helped to give it to him here, or whether this characteristic developed in his association with his wonderful wife and family. But C.Y. Stevens, of all men that I have known at all, had a genuine humanitarianism about him. And we are reaping the results of this here today and in the future. Here's a man who wanted other people to have the good things which came rather hard for him, and he wanted other people to have them with much less effort so they could carry on from there. I see that I'm billed to speak on the challenge of excellence, uh, I, uh, and I assume in connection with the center. Uh, <laughs> Or maybe they were just looking for a title by this time. At any rate, at my first meeting with the faculty and staff of Iowa State last September, my convocation talk, I attempted to discuss with my colleagues three goals for the future of Iowa State. These were not original. I listed them in this order and deliberately. The first being that of excellence. All of our other work, all of our other ambitions come to naught if ever we lose the quality of excellence. Secondly, I listed, as Mr. Redeker has mentioned here in connection with the growth and development of this school, the goal of diversity. This institution must become, is becoming, a broad-based university where excellence can come from all places on our campuses, surely the science and technologies, but also from the humanities and the social sciences. 
And I list it as the third goal for the future, that of service to the state. This goal is old as Iowa State University itself is. Seems to me as we think about the center, the facilities it will afford us, that it will help us mightily in achieving all of these goals. The facilities here will not only encourage excellence, they in fact will demand it will require it of us, such fine facilities they will be. They will surely add this new dimension or help us continue to add this new dimension in the performing arts, uh, in the fine arts, which Iowa State is interested in achieving the role of diversity. The goal of service clearly will be served by the Coliseum, by the Theater Auditorium, and in particular, the Continuing Education Center, which will give us a facility to go with our talent in assisting the people of Iowa in the economic and social development of the state. I'm afraid I've left my subject, maybe. I've enjoyed being with you, and in behalf of Iowa State University, I want to thank everyone who has played such an important role in making this into a reality. You give us hope, we look to the future with great optimism. Thank you. More than 12 years ago, just a little more than 12 years ago, Dr. Hilton came back to this campus as its president, as the president of this of Iowa State College at that time. He planted seeds and nourished them that now have grown, flourished, and we have a reality. Many realized that what he had may be just a dream. With their assistance and his leadership, it is where we are today. Many people, of course, shared with Dr. Hilton the uh, high ideals and objectives for a cultural center. Foremost, of course, was Mr. Stevens. And I am happy to, pre to present President Emeritus Hilton, who will pay a special tribute to this one individual and to present our guest of honor, Mrs. Stevens, Dr. Hilton. President, Mr. Thorson, Dr. and Ms. Parks, alumni, students, staff, friends of the university. This is a story of a dream come true. Hundreds have worked to make it a reality. Thousands have contributed. Their names will stand tall in the history of Iowa State, and indeed stand tall in the history of all of Iowa. And the shadows that will be cast by the work they have done will reach farther into the history than perhaps any of us can even faintly comprehend here today. But out of the hundreds who have worked so hard and the thousands who have contributed so much, the name of one man stands out among all others. That is C.Y. Stevens, a graduate of Iowa State and one of the great dairy leaders of the dairy industry. C.Y. was most was a most remarkable man. The story of his arrival on this campus with virtually nothing but a desire for an education, followed by his business success, his philanthropies, his concern for other people, all of these became a tradition within his lifetime. Of all the remarkable things that this unusual man accomplished during his life, his contributions to the center here at Iowa State may well stand as a capstone 
of his work. It was his original gift to the center, plus his untying efforts with others, which made groundbreaking possible here today. C.Y. summed up his dedication to the center project with these words, and they're on your program, and they're on this card over here. I would have liked to write a fine poem, or a great book, or made a worthy discovery in science. But since all of these discoveries have been denied me, I shall give as much money as possible to train many others to do these things I would have done. See why I can be with us only in spirit today. But we are fortunate and highly pleased to have his family with us for this event, which will make his name immortal in the history of this institution. It is totally fitting that C.Y.'s lifetime companion and one who is also an Iowa Stater should turn the first shovel of dirt in these ceremonies. Down through the years, Mary Ann Stevens has shared C.Y.'s love and dedication for this university, and it, it is right that the honor of breaking ground for this center today should be heard. Mary Ann, maybe you have a few things you'd like to say. Thank you, Dr. Hilton, Sam, all of you who have spoken for my husband. I do thank you, and all of you who, who are here today, it's wonderful to be here. We're very happy as a family to be here for this wonderful occasion. And when I say we, I mean all of the Stevens family who could possibly be here today. We are here to stand tall for Steve. For an adored father, a devoted brother, and a respected leader in industry and in education. Speaking for him now, his sentiment is best expressed in the first talk he made for the beginning of the drive before the Ames Chamber of Commerce in January 1962. I have taken a few, I think three paragraphs from that speech that talk to read to you today. Tonight, I hope to convey to you a part of my sentiment for and my interest in Iowa State University and the Iowa State Center. Just to say that my feeling is intense puts it mildly. My debt of gratitude to Ames is of such magnitude that it can never be fully repaid. I say Ames because the university will ever be Ames to me, and because Ames is the community, it is the people, and it is the state. Each played a paramount part in my life. I came to Iowa State as a timid country boy of the Red Clay Hills of North Georgia, where nature bestowed opportunities charily. My scholastic background was meager, the country school was built from donations by the community. Lumber, labor, very little money. The timbers were put together with wooden pegs. There was no money for nails. It was here that I learned to yearn for things beyond the horizon. I shall never forget stepping off the early morning train from Chicago, here in Ames on that brisk September morning in 1920. The air had the feeling of early fall, and it smelled fresh and good. I was in a new and wonderful land. It was high adventure to be so far from home, and to be in the middle of the prairie country I had read and dreamed about, this land of broad cornfields, black soil, was such a contrast to the red hills of North Georgia, where most of the land had to be terraced to keep it from washing away and farming was done with a single mule and a walking plow. 
and at a college where a poor student could earn money for a college education, wear shoddy clothes, and still have the respect of everyone. The people were a little different from those back home, but they were friendly and considerate. I liked them immediately. This was the beginning of the four most pleasant and rewarding years of my life. Scholastic requirements seemed a little rough but I gradually acquired knowledge and a little poise and a great appreciation for good music and dramatics. But most important of all, I acquired a world of self-confidence with a burning urge to do many things, all kinds of things, and to do them well. This tells the story of my husband. It tells a little bit more of the things that were spoken of him, the things that were said this morning. And again, I want to say, we're so happy to be here today to see his dreams become a reality. Thank you. Mrs. Stevens' family, please form a circle right around here, just in front of these pictures beyond this little pile of dirt here. You please stand close together. where they are getting prepared now to break the ground for the center. Dr. Hilton and Mrs. Stevens now have the shovel in front of us now, and Mrs. Stevens is preparing to turn the first shovel full of earth. There are so many photographers in front of us that we're having a hard time to see what is going on. The first shovel has been turned. Mrs. Stevens has turned the first shovel. Now they are posing for the photographers. The shovel is in the hands of Mr. Hamilton, and he is presenting it to Dr. Hilton. Dr. Hilton and uh, Mr. Hamilton now are posing with it. Mr. Hamilton has asked Dr. Hilton to return the second shovel of the Of course, we at the center a dream for a long time of Dr. James Hilton, President Emeritus of Iowa State. And now, Mr. Thorson, president of the student body, will represent the students in now and time to come in turning the shovel. The shovel of dirt here at the center site. It was a big weekend, whether you were a freshman girl having that first homecoming date, a football player for the winning Cyclones, or an institution that was seeing the start of a dream come true. It was a little bit of now and tomorrow. <laughs> 